This is Bonnie. If you like videos like this, please hit the button for like, subscribe, and comment. It helps us make more videos. Firefly, a fish bone, maybe the ocean curve and the ocean shear and the ocean texturizer. Oh, and the international. <laughs> those of you that sharpen Benica shears, am I right? Are those are the most difficult ones to sharpen? All right, so these are the most complicated of our Benica shears to, to sharpen. Fishbone's been around a while. When you do the fishbone, it is a 60 degree angle. Now, if you see other shears that look like the fishbone and they're not the Benica brand, if you do a 60 degree, you're probably going to mess them up. Uh, the reason you can do 60 degrees is these are very, very hard steel and it'll hold that edge. And if you don't do 60, these are designed. The blade is exposed. They're designed with them closed to go in and razor with them, like a regular razor. And they won't razor if you do it something longer than that. Do I always do them at 60? Sometimes not. I've got some hairstylists that really abuse uh, these shears. They use them in ways they shouldn't. And I'll do a blunter angle on them. But that would be the exception. If you're using a, a flat home machine like ours, put it angled way down. In fact, I'll move the little ledge on our clamp. That I can show you later if you want to see. I move the little ledge up because it allows me to have more room to angle it way down. If you angle it down at 60 degrees, usually pretty much that blade will lay on your um, plate. You sharpen it like a beveled edge, and you're going to have to kind of pull it across to get that, get that tip. When you do it, the burr comes up pretty quick because it's so sharp, so don't use anything super aggressive. I usually use, will try to pull up my burr with whatever my finest pad is. Um, when I polish it, I'll polish it just to the edge. I might polish it a little closer to the edge than I would other shears. Because this shear is not designed to do a straight cut across. It's designed for sliding, slithering, and razoring. So you need to tell your clients that if they're buying this, it will push hair. It's designed to push hair because it's designed to slide. Does that make sense? Um, and I think I can, and you should have this in your packet um, with, with all this information. The handles do bend easily. Don't make the mistake of thinking the blade is going to bend easily. It's two different metals. That blade will snap and pop on you. It's not that it's, not that it's cast. It is forged. But the blade is a very, very hard metal. But the handles, let's say the tips don't come together now, are very easy to bend. Firefly. Firefly is a weird animal. It took me a little while to figure out how to sharpen it myself. Um, the screw is the craziest screw out there. Um, it has like a little, what they call it a bell washer underneath that supports the clicker plate. And you have to adjust it extra tight or it won't cut. If you adjust it like another shear where it falls down, it's going to fold and bend there. So this is the exception to the rule. You want to have it adjusted tight. If you sharpen it, it's not cutting right, do one more click to tighten that screw. The screw has to be tightened, and to take it apart is hard. Also, the angle on this shear are two different angles. 40 degrees on this one. You see that's a straight, uh, uh, this is a straight one on this one. The other one has a, a, like a K blade or curve. The K blade is 45 degrees, and the straight one is 40. So they have two different angles to it. I'll pass that around on this side. How common is it that they have different angles on it? Very uncommon. That's what I rare, 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 rare. Um, that's why I'm telling you this is a little different animal. The people that have this shear, they love it. But it usually comes back to me really abused and beat up. What's the um, purpose of that? It's for detail point of cutting, very dainty cutting, for some of your your stylists that I call them eagle stylists that like to go in and do little bitty snips. Not like William. William would probably hate it. Uh, Jeremiah, those of you who remember him that's come and spoke before, that's his favorite shoe. But he's like little bitty point cutting type of thing. Now, I don't bend shears much. Y'all know that. Everybody knows that of me. This is the only shear that really a lot of times I have to bend it. And it's more a twisting the edges in. 
And I give you permission already, don't, don't go crazy with it, but I give you permission to bend this shear if you can't get it to cut. So you've sharpened it, it won't cut. Do you see how I am angled in the little bending bar? When I'm bending it, I'm twisting it, sort of like um, he did yesterday, so that I want to be twisting it so the edge is coming toward in. It's not that the shear is so much out of alignment this way, is that it kind of gets bent out because those blades are so skinny. So you're going to want to kind of twist it and bend it so the blade comes back in. And I usually just twist one blade, check it, and if that fixes it's fine, I might go do the other blade if that's not it. Before you go on, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I believe it was these fish, fish shells, bones. Fish bones. Mm -hmm. You said do not bend. Was that the... Yeah, I mean, if they're out of alignment, yeah. I, I, but I would... But can you I, hammer them? You know what? I mean... Because I forgot to ask him yesterday. I, the hammering of it, I mean, don't do it without calling and asking me permission, because that's a very expensive shear. If you break it, you have to replace it. Yeah. If you call and talk to me first, and you convince me that's the only way you can fix it, I might say okay. I'll probably say send it to me. Let me see what I can do with it first. Okay. But, um, yeah, any of our Benica shear, the only one I'm going to tell you you can bend without calling me is a, is a firefly, okay? Any other Benica shear, please call me on the phone first. So it's a five-part screw system. No, it's a screwy screw. You have a straight blade and a curved blade. I use a cushion plate, but a lot of times I'll do kind of a semi-convex on it because it has a little design on it. That blade's so skinny, and they want that cute little firefly design. So try to keep the design on it. Don't lift the tip of the curved shear. The, that blade that's curved, your temptation is, when you're working it, is to lift it up too much. If you think of it as L-shaped instead of curved, work this section and then work that section, you're going to be safer. Because if you start lifting it up, you're going to take that tip off. Does that make sense, those of you that are sharpened? Um, uh, the ride line. Um, 2,000 to 4,000 grit, you don't need to have anything super, super smooth and shiny on it. Some people kind of go crazy on ride lines, and they're doing 6 and 8 and 12,000. The more, um, the higher the grit on your water stones, really the stickier they become. So I, I probably wouldn't do anything higher than a 4,000 grit, which if you've got the um, Kitayama, that's the yellow side. Um, Handle bending on this one. The handles do bend very easy, but that handle bender doesn't work very well on bending those handles. In the it just hits it wrong because of those weird handles. So um, if I have to bend the handles on that, I'll find Gene or find somebody with some big strong hands and have him work it back into shape. Because that handle bender, I, you can really get end up with a pretzel trying to use that to work. Um, and then the last thing, like I said, you're going to torque that tip sometimes to make it come together. But that is a real royal pain in the you-know-what to sharpen that shear, but the people that have it love it. I have one lady in Chattanooga that has, what, three pairs of them? Um, and I, she brings them, they're all well used, and she brings them to me to sharpen. International. Now this one, it was our very first shear. Here's some of the older versions of it. You may come across an older version. What makes the internationals different is I put little micro serrations at the tip. Only at the tip. Here is it under the magnifying glass. You see it's right here. And that is put on with that little serration file, that little diamond serration file, and it's the half of the width of that serration file. The way I put it on is you just do a little micro serration and it's the side with the finger rest works best. We've tried both. We put the serration on ourselves. It's not in the factory. Our very first Benica shear had the serration on it. We tried to get it done in the factory. It was never done right, was it, Gene? No. So I find, so I learned how to put it on. It's not that difficult. I have some YouTube videos if you need any help with it. But um, you can also put that little tip on other shears, especially if someone's having a problem with their shears, a hair scooping out at the tip, but they want something to give a nice crisp cut at the tip. That works really well. Uh, it's just a straightforward 45 degree angle. Um, you can bend the handles. Um, this is a forged shear. Call me if you're going to bend the blades. 
and then it's about a fourth of an inch serration on just that one side. You got it? That's is hmm? most of the, um, all shear sharpening, meaning salon and groomer, is the serrations on the uh, finger blade? No, they'll be. Different ways. I just know on Some, this Sometimes they're on both sides. Yeah, I just know on this one, when we experiment it both ways, it works better. If the hairstylists, they're supposed to cut, <coughs> say, thumb down like this. So the serration is at the bottom to grab the hair, and then this one comes down to cut it. So it seems to work better with that. I'll pass that one around this side. All right, we have some new ocean shears. We have some uh, curve, we have a straight, and we have a texturizer. On the ocean shears, and you can recognize them by the little pretty blue fish, there is a five degree angle on one side of the blade, on the, not the finger rest side, on the back side, it's five degrees to here, and then the factory angle is 57 degrees. Oh, I know, I see some faces. This whole side is 57 degrees. This side is 57 up to about halfway up the blade, and then it goes to five degrees. So if you get these and you're trying to sharpen them and you can't figure out why am I not getting a burr, it may be one of these type of shears. Um, we're not the only one that makes them like that. Now, why in the world would we make them this way? What we've discovered is if you slide cut in this area where the one blade, the hair is just kind of easing over it and the one, uh, only one blade is cutting, that is the nicest, smoothest slide cut you've ever felt. Just glides to the hair. It will push the hair if you're trying to do a straight cut there. But for slide cutting, it works well. The rest of the blade is great for point cutting. So you tell your customers, this is for slide cutting, this is for point cutting. When I sharpen it, I don't do it at the 57 degrees. 55 seems to actually hold the edge a little bit better and is sharp enough. When you sharpen at 55 degrees all the way down, you just won't have a burr in that section and you're good to go. So you don't really need to do anything to sharpen at that five degree. You'll just, uh, just polish it off. Um, once again, I'm not doing anything extra um, smooth on the ride line. Um, the 2,000 to 4,000 grit seems to be fine on these, even for slide cutting. The handles can be bent. These are fully forged. Um, if you ever have to bend the blades, call and ask permission, but you should be able to bend them. And um, it's a sword edge um, sharpening on the outside, and then the other one is convex, so that means it's kind of a bevel, but a wide, very wide bevel. Curved shears, same thing. You've got the 55 degree to the 5 degree. I use a um, convexing plate and work on the outside of it to get that curve shape. And once again, on these, you may be more apt to have to tweak the blade. So a lot of times, because they're curved shears, and just like the, and I, I love Jim's presentation, he was talking about curved shears, you may have to take this blade that is at the bottom here and kind of straighten it out, just bend it out a little bit so the tips come together. We have a new kind of texturizer. Five degree angle here. If you put your finger here, you can't cut yourself. The teeth do the cutting. It's a 57 degree angle. That's one from the factory. Is this who went to the Sensei? Sensei came, I think it was the first one to come out with, and they caught the no line. And I've seen people, they're like, I can't get a burr off. I can't get an edge on it. And that's, it's, it's made to only this, this blade cuts, this one doesn't. Once again, you can slide cut with a um, texturizer. And can you see, it's actually a convex edge on the teeth side. Really, really sharp. So you're going to sharpen the teeth, even though in the factory it's 57 degrees, I found 55 actually works a little bit better. It gives you a little stronger edge and they still can slide with it. Um, five degree on the straight blade, so you're just going to leave it alone. Um, I use a convexing plate, polish it. If you have to bend the ant handles, do so. And if the hair snags after you've done it, or maybe even when it's in your sample thing, that nail buffer. The 3,000 grit nail buffer just go over the teeth a little bit. Should fix it. So, any questions about those shears? I went through it fast. 
Any questions about the jam? Uh, good question on the uh, your tooth shears, whether you know trimmers, chunkers, this and that. Uh, back, right? hmm? Previous school, he said all you need to do is a right line on that blade. You just mentioned doing the. Okay, this one is a new animal. Okay. This is a, that's why I'm showing these. This is a new animal, and there'll be other weird stuff that's going to come out in the future. So this one, the teeth do the cutting. And the other blade doesn't. So the, uh, the other blade, the straight blade, all you have to do is the rod line. So, okay. So I've been doing it correctly. You've been doing it correctly. Don't, okay. don't question yourself. That, the reason I'm showing these, these all break the rules. Mm -hmm. yes, which is they yeah. all break the rules from what you've been taught to sharpen. <laughs> yes. These thinner, uh, can I call them thinner? Yeah. Texturized thinners. Okay. Uh, teeth. Yeah. Uh, as as a barber, the, the thin shears, a lot of times when you're doing a thinning, it folds. Right. Folds the hair. Is this better than that? Or this is going to be better about, well, um, not leaving a line. So okay. you're not going to see the, the line as much. Um, I'll be honest with you, because the edge is so sharp that if somebody's using it really aggressively, it does nick up easy. So it wouldn't be one I would use like on dirty hair. Dirty hair, and a nail buffer will bring take those nicks out. But if but if you're cutting with it without a nick, it won't pull the hair. It, it's going to feel super smooth. You can go in and, and slide cut with it like this. And the hair should be wet when doing it. Uh, wet or dry, it's, okay. it's fine. That's probably even better for dry hair. Bonnie, somebody asked what the price of the ocean shoes on. Ocean Shear is uh, what? It's 350 retail. Oh, and by the way, that screw, it's a little hard to get in there and turn it because it's so low. It's a, and uh, we have, that's what our new little UFO tools that look like a fish are for. Because the tail will fit in there and turn that screw. I didn't mention that. But did y'all enjoy the jam this year? Yes. yes. Woohoo! I, I don't know, I kind of thought it was the best we've had. Oh, you say that every year, David. <laughs> I do not do a business. No, I don't say that every year. Some years I don't even put a picture on the wall for them. But, but, but yeah, I, could, this, I have really enjoyed the jam. And the, this is, I think, the only time I can remember I really wish it was an ending because I've really enjoyed it so much. Usually by the end of the jam, I'm so tired of taking it home. But I, everybody, y'all have been great. You've all contributed to it. And the biggest thing you're going to see coming out of here is that friendships going to be given. So make sure you exchange names and phone numbers and cards and things like that. I'm going to be teaching another class in here on the sheer sharpening at one. So we're going to be around if you want to sit around and chat or whatever. But um, the jam is officially over. So